Well, the Phillies have been getting their second look at Larry Gurra here in game number five today, Joe. First pitch, and it will be an easy out. Gura early before he settles down. I wonder if that's what Pete was thinking about jumping on that first pitch. A little sinker ball. Many times, Pete, the first time if he goes up and he'll look for one pitch, if he gets it, he'll go to swinging at it. Rose was three for 15. That brings up Bake McBride. He's seven for 15, 467. Takes the first pitch low, ball one. You've been hearing a lot of the sounds around home plate with our microphones. You'll really hear Dutch Renard call out a strike. We'll try to time it to really give you a full, full listening. He's going to cut my work down in half. I'm going to listen to him. Dutch Renard. I think the audio man said not so loud. Two balls, one strike. It's very rare that an umpire will say ball or strike. Remember, someone would say, ah, but he really booms it out. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. There's the NBC microphone. It's hung right over the screen, way behind home plate. So you got to have some set of pipes to reach it that far, and he. He's having no problems, old Dutch. 2-2 two -two pitch. <laughs> Joe, you right, might recall the second last weekend of our Game of the Week season, Renner was behind the plate in Philadelphia, and Bob Boone paid him the highest compliment I've ever heard paid a home plate umpire. Boone, he said the next day, I've never had an umpire behind home plate where I had to question one pitch. And with him, I had to question not one single pitch. He never missed one. Hmm. Count remains full. Three balls and two strikes. He reminds me so much of Al Barlick, who now uh, supervises National League. You never had any problems listening to Barlick. You could be in St. Louis, you'd hear him in Springfield, Illinois, where he lives. Two, three balls, two strikes, one out. We're just getting started. Nobody on. Fouled out of play. Tom, how about these shadows? Well, the shadows at home plate, Joe, definitely an advantage for the pitchers. You can see at the start of the inning actually the, the shadows at the mound were right in Larry Gura's eyes and they've gotten off of him the sun is set behind us enough so he is in the shadows but the shadows at home plate definitely be an advantage for the hitter they seem to be right across the area right across home plate right now Big McBride three and two he's fouled off a couple of pitches center field Amos Sotis has plenty of room two outs And see how Clint Hurdle came over from right field. The problem spots with the sun, not on that high one, but a ball hit to Otis's left. That'll be in right center field. He might have a problem. For Hurdle in right field, if he goes to the right field line, he'll have a problem at times. And in left field for Willie Wilson, if he goes toward the left field line, he might look right into the sun. So there are two outs. Nobody on. Mike Schmidt, the batter. Schmidt, five home, uh, five base hits, 14 times at bat, hitting 357. He has one home run. <laughs> Joe Garagiola with Tony Kubek and Tom Seaver, top half of the first, two outs, nobody on. Mike Schmidt takes it inside. It's one ball and one strike. Pete Rose hit the first pitch right back to Gura. Easy out. McBride, 3-2 count. Fouled off a couple. Hit the ball to center field. A routine fly ball. Two outs. And here's Schmidt. One and one the count. Fouled out of play. One ball, two strikes. Joe, Tom, we've talked as we look at your line score about the Royals being a better hitting ball club against right-handed pitching. Phillies are a better hitting ball club, I think, against left-handed pitching. If Gura has an advantage today, it's a gusting wind that is blowing from the left field corner to right. So Boone's ball got stopped by that wind in the Wilson catch yesterday. It might stop some balls to left field today. Popped up. Foul territory. Porter coming over. He will not have a play. You know, Tony, another advantage that he does have 
is pitching in this ballpark, which is not only the wind today, but those big, spacious alleys, the big outfield, and Larry is very conscious of the home run, does not like to give up the home run. Of course, no pitcher does. There you see his stats from game one. It's six innings, gave up just a couple of runs. But this is a ballpark where you can give up that long fly and not have to worry that much about the home run. I think as in Philadelphia, he was a little bit more concerned about the home run. There's another home run hitter and Greg Luzinski on deck. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Time call now. Porter says, I'm going to start a new sequence of signs. Apparently not sure in his own mind. says I'll take it. Three out. Three up. Three down for Philadelphia. We go to the bottom half of the first inning to score. Philadelphia nothing. Kansas City coming to bat. Strong right arm out there on the mound. Strong Marty Bystrom, six foot five, two hundred pounds. Joe, 22 years old, was called up from the minor leagues. Oklahoma City, the American Association, on September 1st. It was 5-0 and oh for the Phillies down the stretch drive with a very impressive 1.5 ERA. Just 36 innings pitched, but still only 26 hits. A lot of confidence, very aggressive on the mound, very typical of the young pitchers on this Philly staff. He's got a very good fastball, both a riding and sinking fastball, and a good curveball, which he has good control of, and he'll throw that curveball if he does get behind. Started five games for the Phillies and completed just one. A look at the ballpark down the lines, 330 in left center field, 385, 410 in, well, just a little bit off dead center. There you see it. And 385 in right center field, 330 down the right field line. Bystrom has given up only one home run in the 36 innings that he has pitched facing Willie Wilson who is two for 17 in the series he has struck out eight times they've been keeping the ball the breaking ball at least right in on his hands one strike fastball no score bottom of the first nobody on leadoff man one and one Sure has struggled in this uh, World Series. Hitting just 118. Left side, 0 .083. Stolen two bases. Here's where they come with the curveball, and there it was. Two and two. And he tried again. Two balls, two strikes. He got two quick strikes to the fastball. Now he's got him crippled. They're not giving him strikes in there. When they get ahead of him, two strikes, they go inside bad. Nine strikeouts for Willie Wilson on a curveball. The record is 11 strikeouts. A good example of the way they've been pitching to Willie Wilson. Hard stuff in, and then when they do get two strikes, come back with a breaking ball, and you can see it break right down underneath Willie Wilson's bat. Marty Bryce, from a young pitcher, has a, a very fine curveball. Here is Frank White. White has two base hits, 18 times at bat. That's a 111 average. of course started the last game of the, in the playoff series against the Astros kind of tough to have a young pitcher like that but he was just as cool as as a 10 year veteran out of play one and one I talked to Herm Sturrett before the game talking about him how he does keep his cool how he does have good poise for a youngster and they gave told him he was pitching before that game he says give me the ball I've been waiting for it for you to give it to me for the last seven days he wanted to pitch that game In time, White is out. Nice play by both Rose and Bystrom. 
You know, one thing that's significant, I think, about Rose's play at first base, Joe, the way he has played down there on balls that have been hit to him, even though he has bo uh, hit balls to him that he can get back to the bag and, and beat the run of the bag, he makes that pitcher come over that bag. I've not seen him on a play like that go to the bag himself. And that forces that pitcher to hustle over to the base. A pitcher will never get lazy when it does that. Even if Pete is just a few feet off the bag, he seems to want that pitcher to come all the way to first base. So there are two away, and here is George Brett. Brett, six for 15. That's a 400 average. He has one home runs, two runs batted in. I feel like I'm repeating. He makes those American League hitters who haven't heard him before, well, they jump a little bit, a little startling. He likes to put it on, Dutch Renner does. Any ball hit the right field in the air is going to get a lift from that wind blowing out to right field. One ball, one strike. As a catcher, you love to hear that. As a batter, you don't mind it until it's the third strike. Then you'd like to take that bat and stifle him, the umpire. But it's not his fault. There's another base hit, so what's new? bring up Willie Akins and he should get a tremendous hand when he comes up. who right now I would have to say would get my most valuable player a vote but he and George Brett are neck and neck how do you guys feel that's two he'd get mine at this point also Aiken's got mine Joe no question well that settled that in a hurry we got a few games to go though right he's got 21 total bases leads he's got eight runs batted in leading everybody he's got five runs scored he's got four home runs one ball, no strikes, 1,400 sluggy percentage. He's got that, and he's got his back foot out of the box. And Dutch Renner, just before the ball was released, took a glance down on the first pitch to see if his foot had moved out of the box. See what Renner said, there you see him nod down, look at the foot. Now he can't anymore. There goes the runner, pulled foul. I might add, I asked him about his name because with some, well, it's not controversy, but some people call and some papers have written. So he said, my name is Willie Mays Aiken. But when I play baseball and they announce me and when you fellas talk about me, I prefer Willie Akins. So that's what it'll be. His name is Willie Mays Akins, but that's what we'll refer to, Willie Akins. One strike, two outs. George Brett is on at first base. Outside. Two balls and one strike. I think kind of a touching story as we look at this crowd here at Royal Stadium. Willie Mays Aiken had a speech impediment. Still does. A stutter. You may have heard him uh, earlier today, but he was very shy, but he's overcoming. And this has really helped him, they said. Really helped him to come out. He's had to do a lot of interviews, and he's really come out of the shell. I think it's great. That's why I think Mel Tillis, the country western star, he brings it out and he's working on it. There goes Brett. They're going to have a tough time getting him. They won't get him. One thing a base stealer wants to know, and I talked to several of the coaches about Bison. They said he is slow to first base and very slow home with that high knee kick. Brett stole 15 bases during the regular season. Very low for him because he had ankle problems. But boy, look at the slow delivery to home plate. No chance for Booney. I counted the steps quickly on our replay. He had taken three steps as we look at this angle before Bison threw the ball. Called down on strikes, so that ends the inning. We complete one inning of play here. The score, Philadelphia nothing. Kansas City nothing. And two up. The defense looks like this. Behind Larry Gurup, Willie Wilson, Amos Otis, Clint Hurdle, from left to right. George Brett, UL Washington, Frank White, Aikens in the infield. Daryl Porter behind the plate and Larry Gurup. 
Here is Greg Luzinski. Luzinski playing left field. He was scheduled to be the DH, but Lonnie Smith, a jammed little finger from batting practice, swollen, couldn't play. Luzinski hits the first pitch foul as strike one. So he's in left field more than his DH. Been a little bit of controversy swirling around this big guy. He was sick in Philadelphia, but said yesterday at least was caught in the paper. I wasn't sick. I could have played. Dallas Green told you, Tony, that he couldn't play or didn't play him because he was sick. So Luzinski said he was sick one day that he was unable to play. One ball, one strike. He might have been sick of Green telling him he couldn't play. Well, you've got to figure that uh, his bat's got to be in the lineup for this ball club. He's had some good years for them. Not the last couple, but he did get two game-winning RBI hits, home run and double in the championship series. His bat is very valuable. One ball, two strikes. Of course, as everybody knows, as we look at Dallas Green, Luzinski is in the lineup for his bat. He's not what you would call a good outfielder, although much improved. One out. That is something you will see, I think, Gora do more of today. Go inside, as you talked about, this big ballpark. And with the wind gusting again, if he does make a mistake inside, that wind might hold the ball in. So he may challenge hitters a little bit more, go to a little more off-speed stuff at times, let the left uh, right-handers pull the ball more often. Here's Keith Marlin. Renard has this crowd stirred up. They're reacting to every strike call. He can, they can hear him all over the ballpark. Two strikes, he turned over his screwball. Gura, remember in that second game, pitched four perfect innings. He retired the first 13 men that he faced. Didn't mean to swing, little looper. Hurdle is there. There are two outs. the point but hurdle is having trouble with the sun Gura's in the shadows there's a strip of sunlight running across in front of the plate home plate is in shadows so the hitters the umpires the players are having problems and our video man must be going bonkers trying to balance the colors you can see how bright it is out there and now we go in the darkness so guys we appreciate your effort and people need not adjust your set it's just mother nature strike one Joe, you can see it on the first two hitters in this inning. Luzinski just froze in the fastball inside. It looked like it was down. That's his pitch. And Moreland had a very weak swing. He waved at the ball that he hit the right field. So the, the shadows are a factor for the hitters. Two strikes. Tony, not only the shadows are a factor, but I think Larry Gura pitching, there's a good shot of the shadows and what we're talking about here at Royal Stadium. Gura pitching and mixing his pitches up more and your point about him coming inside he must come inside with his fastball from the end of the plate in to these right handed hitters when he does that he's going to make all his other pitches effective just like the screwball that he threw or the change up that he threw to Moreland and then Moreland comes right back and swings at a bad pitch out of the strike zone this little left hander knows how to pitch he has the four basic pitches and when he's pitching well he knows how to use them screwball outside two balls and two strikes he pitched 283 innings and he only hit five people and you know he's going inside a lot so that's pretty good control. Gura with the second strikeout both call is now retired six men in a row and this Kansas City crowd really reacting not only to Gura's pitching Renner's umpire and we go into the bottom half of the second. It's the Philadelphia Phillies and the Kansas City Royals. Nothing and nothing. And do I... Lezinski left. Maddox and center McBride to right for the Phillies. Schmidt throw a trio in rows around the infield and Bob Boone behind the plate and Marty Beister. Al McRae. All one. McRae hitting at 533. Eight base hits. 15 runs batted in. They're playing him in right center field. Ball two. Kid on the mound without him. Dallas Green says the Phillies would not be in the World Series because he was 5-0 in September. Would have made the club in the spring, but he pulled a muscle. Off the leg. Trio's there. They're going to get him. It goes 1-4-3. McRae has one RBI, not 15. He just got a base hit taken away from him. 
batting six. Number 26, Amos Otis. Eistrom still refuses to rub it. Tommy? Just like any young pitcher, you get behind a good hitter, and those good hitters are going to hit the ball hard. Tom McCray, of course, a 2 0 pitch and another line drive for him. Did that hit Ended his, up and out. Did it hit the heel of his glove and hit his foot? Or the, or the, mouth, or the rubber? Looked to me like it might have hit him in the knee, inside yeah, of the knee or the heel of the glove. Here's Amos Otis. Otis. Nine base hits, 17 times at bat, a 529 average with two home runs and six runs batted in. After this batter, I'm going to ask Luciano if anybody ever told Renner to do a little more quietly. They're going to check the bat. He's going back. We're going to ask you right now. Anybody ever tell him, hey, let me hit and be quiet? Hey, when I first started out, I was as loud, if not louder, than him. And every batter used to say, will you shut up? Keep that down. It drove them crazy. For all pitches, they really yelled. And I had to shut up because they told me, they kept telling me, don't do it, don't do it. And I'll tell you, you antagonize the ball players, and they get very, very provoked. Hey, why does he do it then? He spent so many years in the minor leagues, and down there, you've got to dominate. I mean, you've got to let those young kids know that you are boss. And everybody in the minor league does it. He spent 12 years in the minor league, so finally, when he got up here, he can't change. He's entitled to a 12 years in the minor leagues, but what do you mean in the minor leagues they dominate? You guys think you're dictators in the big leagues. One strike pitch to Otis. to laugh thinking in the minor leagues it'd be 10 20 people in the stands he must blow him out of the ballpark when he did that two strike count on Amos Otis no score bottom of the second <laughs> missed it bat all the way out to the shortstop Larry Boa and that's the third strikeout for Bystrom. He swung at that like he had no idea where that ball was. It's a pretty sharp breaking. It was hard and a real tough breaking pitch, even though it was up. He threw him very tough, Tony. He threw him a good pitch on the black. The time, the pitch before that, comes back another pitch on the back, and you can see how Amos Otis looking at that young pitcher on the mound. Brings up Clint Hurdle, who is four for nine, a 444 average. strike two outs nobody on no score in the bottom of the second two strikes one thing we haven't seen during this series that I expected to see more of Joe are off speed pitches more off speed pitches change up straight change ups and slow curveballs <coughs> Clint Hurl got a curveball here Willie Aikens got a straight change on the first pitch of the last inning there's another off speed pitch Tom, wouldn't you be doing him a favor as we see this shot here by throwing off-speed pitches with it being so hard to see? When you look at Willie Mays Aikens or you look at Clint Hurdle, you're talking about two guys that are dead fastball hitters. And these are guys that you have to change speeds on. You've got to throw the straight change. You have to throw the slow breaking ball. Not only is that a good pitch against them, it's going to help your fastball when you do throw it, especially if you have as good a fastball as Bystrom has. Outside, two and two. The problem with uh, a guy like Bystrom that he could have against the left-handed hitting is the one that the, the staff has had against Kansas City the first two games. If they make a mistake with the breaking pitch, the left-handers can pull it more easily. If they get it in the air, it's going to go on right out of here on that win. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the second, no score. Clint Hurdle. Larry Bow at short. In time. Three up, three down. We complete two innings of play here. The score, Philadelphia Phillies, Kansas City Royals, nothing. And two up for Philadelphia in the top half of the third. The vantage point is behind home plate, but in center field looks like there's some bugs swirling around. Let's get a report from our expert on bugs, Merle Harmon. <laughs> 
<laughs> Joe, there may be bugs in center field, but there are none here behind home plate. I know because of the closeness of our lens and our big lens in the center field camera that those of you watching at home probably see those things flying back and forth, but there's none here at home plate. At least it's not bothering the hitter or the pitcher or catcher. Okay, Merrill, first pitch, center field. Amos Sotis is there, and there's one out. That's the tough spot, that little looping, soft, semi-line drive in the sun, and Otis had a battle it. Seven men in a row retired by Larry Gora. Brings up Larry Boa. Boa with seven base hits in 16 times at bat. 438. No home runs. Two runs batted in. And they play him on the line against right hand. Well, he's batting right-handed. Hurdle is not as far over in right field as Wilson would be in left field is what I'm trying to say. First pitch, base hit. There's the first hit of the game. The ball leads this uh, series. Stolen base, he's got three. We told you many times about the surprise steal off Leonard when he was, Phillies were four runs down. They played him right. He's a straightaway hitter, more uh, right-handed. Hits it up the middle. From the left side, he hits the ball to left field. Gura's move, I can't remember that it's that good. He changes his rhythm. Not that good a move, Tony, but he has, a, he, he holds runners very well. He's got such a kick that, they can't tell if he's going home or coming to first base. That was it right there. You just called it. Ball one, Bob Boone. Ball with the first hit for the Phillies. Also leads in stolen bases with three. They've got a hit and run combination up there with Bow on the bases and Boone in the batter's box. No score. Top of the third. One out. Boone could not believe that Willie Wilson caught that ball deep left center field last night, nor could anybody on the bench. Hey, hey. Two balls and no strikes, and could have gone farther. give you the same look twice. He'll hold the ball, he'll pitch a little quicker, he'll kick the knee one time, he'll give you a different head motion. Ruben Amaro, the first base coach, is reading him. He will relay information, sometimes call time and talk to his base stealer or base runner. Does it a lot with Willie, uh, with uh, Lonnie Smith. There he goes, swung on, right field. Out goes White, makes the catch. They got a chance for a double play. It'll be an easy one. Boa is doubled up. Look where Frank White ended up. Way out in right field. Second and first. And then he said, there is no way he's going to get it. Then he took off again. This ball is in short right field. Look at the composure he had. State, call it what you want to get the ball back in the infield. Ruben Amaro, watch him. Watch Bo's reaction, Tom. You talked about Frank White's range through the entire series here, Tony, and you can see Larry Bo doesn't believe it either. He knows he's dead by then. Ruben Amaro at that point was waving him way back, get back to first base, but Larry, Larry Bo knew he was de a dead duck. So, bottom of the third, no score here. Porter leads it off. He is 0 for 10. Ball one. Both ball clubs with one base hit. Brett, the hit for Kansas City. Boa, the hit for Philadelphia. No score. Bottom of the third. What a play by Frank White. There's his first base hit. his friends and friend lives a couple hundred miles from here but when she saw her friend Daryl Porter over 10 brought the bat back today and said here here's the good bat use this one and there's the results his first base hit of the World Series Porter is on UL Washington the batter Watch this, how he hung on to 
coming in for the bunt. Which might have been a mistake. Or you could blame Trio, because he was bunting for a base set. Trio did not have time to react and come over and make the play at first base. It was uncovered, but how he hung onto the ball, I don't know, Joe. And they gave him a base hit on it. UL Washington gets a base hit, and Mike Schmidt wants to talk to the pitcher, and here's another look at that play. Watch this. Rose diagnosed, he comes in. Trio starts breaking, but he can't get over in time. So nobody's there, and now there are runners on first and second. Look at Boone, how alertly he went down. You can see him in the back of your picture going down to cover third base. Nobody out. Willie Wilson, he'll be up there bunny. Hitting away. How do you like that? Ball one. Well, he's not going to hit a double play. That you know from the left side. The only thing is, he could strike out for you. He's looking down at Gordy McKenzie. There could be a switch. He has nine strikeouts in five games. Center field. Maddox going back. Tagging up at second is Porter. We're going to have a race. He'll hold. One out. Another reason why he didn't bunt was the man you just mentioned. Porter on second base does not run well. You've got a situation where he's thrown out at third. So that might not be a bad idea because then you got Wilson and you got Washington on the base instead of Porter. And he race him. He does get thrown out. Brings up Frank White, who made that fantastic play to get the double play. The real tribute, as you saw, our coverage of Boa, who started, saw the ball in the air, stopped, and then said there's no way he's going to get it. Think, thought it was going to drop, started for second, and then White made the play. Ended up an easy double play. 4-3-1 if you're scoring is the official ruling. It's high, ball one. Frank White bounced out his first time up. He had a career high in RBIs with 60 this season. Porter at second, UL Washington is at first. Those shadows, Joe, have moved right into the pitcher's face. Marty Bystrom, when he comes to deliver the ball now, gets a good shot of sunshine right across his eyes as he delivers the ball. It's not really, I don't think, an effect, let's say, his control, but it could affect if he gets a line drive hit back at him. One ball and two strikes with one out. Bottom of the third, no score. There's a good shot of what that sunlight is doing. You can see. Although he's wearing that cap. This pitcher's face is completely in the sun. As you can see on that shot, popped up. They're calling it an infield fly as Trio hauls it in. So there are two away. Now it brings up George Brett. by the Royals fans. I hope you heard the interview Brett had with Tony about the knockdown pitches. Fouled out of play. He said, I don't know if you didn't hear it. Let me repeat it for you. Something like, I don't know if he threw at me intentionally. I don't care. You're not supposed to be intimidated, and I'm not going to be intimidated by it. During the season, this man hits 437 against right-handed pitching stats are a lot better. The all-star game on he had 420 against everybody. Is that hot? He's tied for second in the league and runs better than with 118. He and Ogilvy, Cecil Cooper led with 121. Up there now with Porter at second, UL Washington first two outs. It's inside, it's one ball and one strike. Brett incidentally uses a very famous bat model. Pee Wee Reese told us a T85. Marv Throneberries. Marvelous Marv's model. Well, Marv was like me. He didn't use it too much. He didn't get it damaged. <laughs> A lot of hits in that bat. Two balls in one strike. <laughs> A George Brett fan. He can't wait to see what happens as we go to the handsome young George Brett. He's got it all going for him personality 
good looking and can hit. Bouncing ball, they're going to get out of it. Trio, big hop to Rose. So, Bystrom pitches out of it. At the end of three complete innings, the score here in Kansas City. Philadelphia Phillies, nothing. Kansas City Royals, nothing. And two up. To lead it off. He hit the first pitch right back to Gura. It was an easy out. Pete is three for 16 in this series. Strike one. And Brett Nakin's at the corners for Kansas City looking for a bot. Pete forces him in by faking. As you said, yes, he doesn't bunt a whole lot, though. No one inside, one and one. There's a shot of the corners. I tell you, Tony, in, in 14 years, I don't think I've ever seen Pete Rose bunt when he was hitting right-handed. It's outside. So what could happen there is Petey Rose Jr. Quite a show you did with him yesterday after the game. That was a bunch of fun. You can tell the folks when we have time. He's <laughs> something. I'll tell you that kid. 2 1 pitch. Outside, 3 and 1. Did his show with Harry Blackstone. A magician. And Petey Rose, he didn't, there he is. Right back up to middle. Off the glove. White has it. It is in time. when a pitcher gets behind Marty Bystrom got behind Hal McCray he had a line drive and here's Pete swinging at a 3-1 fastball and had a good chance of taking Larry Gura's right arm off and like McCray deflected right to the second baseman and the pitcher gets an out of it that's an excellent play for anyone Frank White as soon as the ball is hit your reaction is even before it's hit you're moving to the right on that ball up the middle and then you've got to reverse ground and reshuffle your feet and make a good play as he did here is Bake McBride, bunts it. Gora's going to get it. Flips and Aikens, two outs. Safe, safe, he missed the bag. He did a tap dance and missed the bag twice. And the first base umpire, Nick Bremigan. Now Gora is checking. He's saying he got the corner. But you can see Aikens really doing a Fred Astaire down there and never could find the bag. Gora makes a good feeling play. He saw it coming. This is a tough play for a left-hander, but watch the foot. He's looking down at his toe, up. He took. He knew he missed it the first time. What they're arguing is that he touched it before. Tie. Ah, uh, we're gonna ask Ron Luciano when we have a chance about those ties at first base. There's an old expression we used in our neighborhood, maybe in yours too, Joe, as we look at the play again. A tie goes to the runner. I don't know if that's true or no, not. No All such right. thing as a tie, Tony. Uh, the uh, rule book says if the ball beats you, you're out, and if you beat the ball, you're safe. No such thing as a tie. Outside ball and hey Ronnie, I just want to ask you. We always hear about you, you guys, in your replays. You saw it on a replay. What'd you think? Uh, I thought it was a tie. Well, there's no such thing as a tie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I uh, gotta, I gotta say Nick Bradman was right because he was behind it and the front foot gets it. The foot closest to you. That's what they teach you in school. The foot closest to you, you give it to him. Strike one. One ball, one strike. Meaning the foot closest to the umpire. That's right. And in that case, it was. It wasn't Willie's. So Nick went against the rule book. Uh, <laughs> nice going, Nick. I thought I'd bring that up. The closest <laughs> foot to him was Aikens, and he gave it to McBride. But then again, Luciano's favorite color is plaid. <laughs> one ball, one strike, one out, no score. They've had a lot of bang, bang plays at first base. It was an error on, the pit, on uh, Aikens. Give the assist to the pitcher. Error on Aikens, the official ruling. Nice play by Daryl Porter. Want to look at the ball now. Two balls, one strike, one out. Now with the pitcher and the batter all in the shade, it is still not perfect because there is a real glare off the center field fence. But it, I think it's a little better right now to hit. Still not ideal conditions. strikes you know we keep talking about this son and we've been showing his fall classic flashbacks and we're going to show you more as we go along 
That sun coming across, I think of Billy Lowe's. Remember, he lost the ground ball in the sun, he said. You, at a World Series, you just flash back, and I look forward to them, and I know you will, our flashbacks. We'll have more for you. We got a list of them. Two balls, two strikes, one out, no score. We're in the fourth. Good shot. You see exactly what McBride's seen, the move from Gura. There's the foot action you talked about, Tom. A lot of pitchers cheat and step halfway between home plate and the first base bag, the left-handers. Gura tries to do it with knee action, head movement, and steps pretty much directly toward first base. He did that time. Well hit. Center field. Otis is going back near the warning track. It is a home run. Two nothing Phillies. There are some Philly fans here, but right now, a little quiet here at Royal Stadium as Mike Schmidt hits his second home run of the series, and the Phillies lead two to nothing. It's how Mike Schmidt talked about moving off the plate so he can extend those arms more. And the first pitch to him was inside. They tried to jam him. He laid off. And then they went away, and Schmidt really extended the arms. Well, Mike Schmidt, you're looking at one of the strongest hitters in the major leagues. And if you give him a chance to extend those arms, he's definitely going to hurt you. Gurren threw him five pitches. Of the five pitches he threw to, to Mike Schmidt, four of them fastballs. And that one he got out of the, over the plate and hit it a long way. One strike on Luzinski. Nice play by Brett. Backhand, long throw. Beautiful. He gets a nice play. Well, we have seen some inconsistent play from both clouds, but we have seen plays like this also. The Frank Whites, the Willie Wilsons, Brett. We've seen Rose make some beauties. Maddox, a great catch against the wall, one of the first two games. Brett made it look easy. Oh, you get that nice hop. Look at him. Look at the movement. The first step, important, the crossover. He looked the ball right into his glove. Knew he had time because it was hit hard and Lazinski was running. Pretty to watch. Moreland didn't mean to swing. Down the right field line. Coming over fast hurdle and no one can get it. Strike one. Two nothing. The Phillies lead a two run homer by Mike Schmidt. So the error for Kansas City costly. We're off tomorrow, and then it's back to Philadelphia Tuesday night. We'll be on 8 o'clock Eastern time. Rich Gale for Kansas City. Carlton for the Philadelphia Phillies. Mike Schmidt with a two-run home run. That's Gus Heffling, the man in the upright-hand corner. The ball throws to Schmidt's left. This is Marlin, the DH. Turned over a pitch, took something off. Many times, Gura... When he takes something off that little sinker he throws, it will look almost like a screwball and move away from the right-handed hitter, Moreland in this case. Two strikes with two outs. Two strikes. Two strikes, two outs, two runs in. Larry Gura against Keith Moreland. First two ball games in Philadelphia, the Phillies were really opportunists. They took advantage of all the mistakes of Kansas City and... and made their own breaks. They didn't in game three when they left 15 men on, but the air, as you mentioned, they took advantage of today. George Brett makes the play. That ends the inning, but the Phillies pick up a lead. Two to nothing as we look at Frank White, who's made some great defensive plays. We've had some uh, by trio, which reminds me of your friend Bobby Richardson, who was in the ballpark today. Remember 1962 when McCovey hit the line drive? Listen to Mal Allen. Ralph Terry on the mound for the Yankees. Two out, bottom of the ninth inning, seventh game of the World Series. Willie McCovey at bat, runners on second and third. A line drive hit right at Bobby Richards as he grabbed it. The World Series is over. And one of the most heart-thumping finishes in World Series history. One to nothing, New York. The Yankees win the series four games to three. Fans love their Royals. And here is Willie Akins. Slow curveball of beauty. I think the Phillies have finally found out that Willie Aikens can hit the hard stuff. And four home runs have all been on fastballs and good hard sliders. And both times they've been up, he's seen two off-speed pitches. There's another one. 
First time up, he got a good straight change. The first time up this time, he gets a, a slow curveball. I think he made believers out of them, but not till he got four home runs. There's another one, three off-speed pitches in a row, and it's one ball and two strikes. And there's a lady who, well, she's going to keep knitting while she roots for her Royals. <laughs> Baseball fans come in all sizes and shapes. He didn't fool him that time. Base hit. He took it to the opposite field. Everything was off speed, and Willie said, I can hit that. You throw the rosin back, I'll hit that. He got the ball upstairs, but I think the Phillies might be surprised because I've seen it before. He is a straightaway or left center field hitter. When you go off speed, he can pull the ball. Many guys who, as we look at him again, who hit the fastball or hard stuff almost straight away, they can wait a little bit longer for the breaking stuff. And he is a good hitter. He knows how to adjust, and if they keep doing that, he will adjust to that also. So Aikens is on, nobody out. Here's McRae, hit the ball hard his first time up, pulls it foul for strike one, hit it off the pitcher, went to the second baseman. Trio made a good play. Aikens is now eight for 17. Willie Aikens. We told you before that he came off severe knee surgery. They reconstructed his whole knee at the end of last year. And he had a very slow start, but when he started hitting, he tore this league apart with 98 runs batted in. One ball, one strike. No outs. Philadelphia two, Royals nothing. We're in the fourth. An error on McBride and a home run by Schmidt, and the Phillies had two runs. High fly ball, right field. Should be no problem. Tonight we have a special family episode of Chips. Monty and John help a young Indian boy protect wildlife from deadly poachers. And then they murdered his wife and his child. Now he's riding for revenge. Clint Eastwood is the outlaw Josie Wales starting at 8 o'clock Eastern time here on NBC. Rose down at first base, not holding Willie Mays Akins. He's behind him protecting the hole. One strike. Check that baseball. Joe, there was another little bit of controversy about the pitcher on the mound just before the championship series and playoffs. He would not have been eligible for the championship series or the playoffs. They deactivated Lurch and Espinosa, and they were upset because they were with the club all year, and they had appeal to the league president, commissioner, and he made Feistrom eligible. Two strikes to count. The on-deck batter is Clint Hurdle. There he is. One man out. Otis was out on strikes his first time up. This kid, they always talk about a young kid who knows how to pitch. This kid has a command of that strike zone when he's in his groove. Very good command and control of his pitches. And he also is working with a very good catcher back there, a guy that knows how to call a game and will work both sides of the plate, too. Bob Boone is very experienced and very knowledgeable on how to work his pitching stand. Well hit, base hit, left field. Aikens, round second, he'll hold. Looked like he might have jumped on a high curveball. Amos Oda struck out the first time up on three pitches, Tony. Three perfect pitches. The first two pitches up this time were perfect pitches. And then a ball inside, and there's the mistake, and that's the mark of the good hitter. The hitter that hits the pitcher's mistake. That's the first pitch that's been a mistake that Otis has seen from Weistrom. So the Royals have the tying runs on base. Aikens at second. Otis is at first. One man out. Hurdle pulls it foul. Strike one, an off-speed pitch. I don't know if that's the scouting report or if Bystrom has developed a romance because you pitchers, you do fall in love with the off-speed pitches. Well, it depends on who the hitter is. 
Joe, and I think the scouting report on Hurdle and Aikens are good, dead fastball hitters. And there's, there's an example of throwing the first pitch off speed and coming back with a fastball over the inside half of the plate and the hitter is taken by surprise. That's pretty good pitching right there. And that's, I think a lot of it goes credit to the catcher behind the plate as well as the young pitcher on the mound. Two strikes on Hurdle, one out. Tyne runs around, Aikens at second, Otis is at first. Two nothing, Phillies lead. Bottom of the fourth, outside. Booney is setting him up for something. That pitch is working. Wasn't that far off. He can go either way. He can go with a fastball or he can go with the off-speed pitch. Let's see what he does. Sophomore center field camera after the signs. Watch where he points where he wants the ball. Fastball inside. Oh, looks like outside. Got him. You saw him shift outside. If Hurdle was kind of looking or peeking, and then that target was inside. Booney does a good, good job, and Hurdle is out on strikes. Watch him now. See him go outside, but then ball. Now he'll go back inside, because that's where he's signaled. Signal. Good piece of catching. Sometimes that gets lost. That's a four strikeout for Bystrom. There are two outs, and here is Porter, who got his first base hit of the series his last time up. Strike one. Aikens is at second, Otis is at first. This game much more critical for the Royals than for the Phillies for them to win. They face lefty after an off day, Carlton, and they're going back to Philadelphia for two. Curve ball misses, one ball and one strike. In fact, it goes right back to before this first game in Philadelphia. When you go into the away town in a short series, you want to come out of there with at least a split. And Kansas City had a chance for a split. They had a four to nothing lead in one ball game with Leonard. They lost it. Green, Bobby Wine down in the left hand corner, and Herm Sturrett, the pitching coach. Outside, two balls and one strike. There's a little bit of a play starting to develop that I can see right now between Boone, the catcher, and Boa, the shortstop, who they are seeing daylight between Aikens, who's trying to get a good jump off second base. And if there's a lot of daylight, Boa's going to sneak behind him, or they're going to throw behind him. Right to Pete Rose, line drive. Porter lines to Rose. That ends the inning, so the Royals do not score. We complete four innings here, and the score, the Philadelphia Phillies two, the Royals nothing. And two up for the Phillies in the fifth. Now the Royals have runners on first and second. And this line shot by Daryl Porter with that newly found bat. He's got one base hit, but Rose spikes the ball, and that's why some people don't care for Pete in the away cities. You don't like Pete until he gets to your town and he plays for you. Then you love what he can do for your ball club. They had a sign up here that says, Pete Rose, grow up. And I'll never forget, uh -huh. he was on a talk show, and he, somebody said, Pete, you grew up in Cincinnati. And he jumped in and said, no, no, no. I lived in Cincinnati. I have never grown up. We are in game number five of the 1980 World Series. Each team has won two. Phillies two in their home ballpark, Veterans Stadium, Kansas City. Two games here. Gary Maddox facing Gurr Drill, but pull foul in the left field corner. One strike on Maddox. It'll be Maddox, Trio, and Boa to face Larry Gurra. There's the shadow on Hurdle. Look at that. Look at the size, the length of it. Way inside. He moved him off the plate. One and one. Philadelphia scored in the fourth. After ground out by Rose, McBride tried to bunt. Gura made the play, turned it over. Two balls and one strike. Gura made the play, but Aikens, as we look at Jimmy Fry, could not find the bag. McBride beat it out. Then Schmidt got a ball out over the plate and drilled it high and pretty far to right center field. So it's two to nothing, the Phillies over the Royals. Left center field, deep, Willie Wilson with that great speed. He just now runs the ball right at the 385 mark. So he's the fast, the fourth fastest man in his neighborhood, huh, Joe? I'd like to meet those other three guys and shake hands with him. Watch this play. He simply outruns it. And I want to say this, a tremendous amount of pressure on the young man because he is a disruptive force. And everybody says, and look at him continue to go after that ball. He has not been hitting. He's been striking out a lot. And yet he's made one great catch after another. Here's a real good look at him. He's got it in sight all the way. Goes right to the wall. He hasn't dogged it because he's not hitting it. That's the tribute. 
and the real test of the good ball player. Now with one out, it's Manny Trio. Outside with a breaking pitch, Phillies two, Royals nothing. The Royals have five hits, the Phillies two. The Royals have committed that costly air, and Schmidt jumped on a fastball for the home run. We're in the top of the fifth, with one ball, no strikes, and one out. Trio the hitter facing Gura. Loops it out to right field, Hurdle battle the sun, and it is getting a lot worse now for the right fielder than earlier in the ball game. But he did battle the sun and make the catch. An off-speed pitch by Larry Gura. Manny Trio got way out in front. You can see how he got his balance out on his front foot. Glenn Hurdle fighting the sun. Gets behind it, and that is a very difficult sun field for an outfielder to play. Boy, you can see that sun glaring in his glasses. Boa jumps on the first pitch, left center field. Otis over, Wilson over. Either one can get it. Nice running catch by A.O. Amos Otis. So, Larry Gura, three fly balls. Three up, three down inning. He gets Philadelphia. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth here in Kansas City at Royal Stadium with a score. The Phillies two, the Royals nothing. And there is Amos Otis. Two fine defensive outfielders, Wilson and Amos Otis. Merge, they retire the side. So that's it for the middle top of the fifth. Two to nothing Phillies in session as people are watching this game in style. UL Washington, the number nine hitter, Willie Wilson, Frank White. It's Marty Bystrom riding a shutout. Phillies two Royals, nothing, bottom of the fifth. A Mike Schmidt two-run home run after the air by Akins, who's had a great series offensively with four home runs, a triple, a game-winning RBI. Look out, Bystrom, single by UL Washington, right up the middle on the first pitch. Speed is on the bases, and Wilson comes to the plate. Washington two for two in the ball game. This telecast is presented by Authority of Major League Baseball and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game, without the express written consent of Major League Baseball, is prohibited. Willie Wilson struck out in the first, ninth strikeout for him in this World Series, flied out in the third. Washington at first with nobody out. Bottom of the fifth, two to nothing, Phillies over the Royals. Tom, do you have in your scouting report and having seen Bystrom about his move, does he hold runners on well? Herb Sturette says he has a fairly decent move to first base, but this big high leg kick, there's a good shot of a very quick move to first base, very good. But his big high leg kick, his slow delivery to home plate, and if the, if the runners can get a jump, it takes Bystrom a long time to deliver the ball to Boone. He does have a good snap throw. He almost jumps and pivots on both feet. Louis Tiot has that kind of move. The American League Schmidt close at third for Wilson's great speed. UL Washington on your split screen to the right. Chop hits him in the batter's box. One strike. Marty Bystrom, just 21 years of age. from a big man, 6'5", 200 pounds, just 22 years old. It's a very quick move, and you know, Ron Luciano, that almost could be considered a balk, it seems like, in the National League. Yes, that is a National League balk, but in the American League, that's not a balk. You're allowed to jump, and they're playing in American League Park, so it cannot be called a balk. Which, I've got to wonder, if you're going to play one set of rules in the National, one set of rules in the American, what do you do in the World Series? Ah, we got a DH rule. Uh, we're playing in the American League Park, so we're using the American League rules. And that is not a bar. Well, it says you've got to step directly toward the bag to which you're going to throw it. He is stepping with his right foot first, and that you can't step directly to the bag with your right foot if you move it first. Anyway, two strikes on Wilson. Chop, it's going to be trouble. Smith makes it to the stop, but couldn't hold on. He might have had the force at second base. No chance for Wilson. He might have had a force on UL. UL also had a good jump, Tom. So, nobody out. Two fast men out. Frank White coming up. I don't believe he'd had a chance at anybody. Tony, Willie Wilson, this is what he's been wanting to do the entire series. Just put the ball in play to the left side. Mike Schmidt went a long way to his left, but I still don't think he'd had a shot at UL Washington at second base. You can see the 
disgust of Schmidt, but he would have had to make an outstanding play with that speed on the base. He ran a long way to try to flag it down. Joe. Tony in the third inning, they had the first two runners on, and Wilson was the batter. They did not bunt. They're trailing by two. Nobody out. First two runners are on. Let's see how he plays it this time. I would think he'd be bunting right here. I think he has to bunt. Schmidt and Rose are charging. He squares around. He's got a perfect bunt. It's going to be trouble. Schmidt just gets it by a stride, and Trio has his foot step down, down at first base. But White does his job, advancing the runners to second and third. What a play by Schmidt. A perfect bunt by Frank White. Trio still hobbling around. He's got the ball as time is out. Don't know if he got kicked or stepped out. He makes Schmidt handle that ball. He got it by the pitcher, and I thought it might be a base hit, too, and it was a do or die, and grammatically it's wrong, but effectively he do it. You've seen the Royals test Mike Schmidt at third base. He's made two fine plays, one here when he throws the ball, the play earlier in the game when he held on to it. Mike, for a big man, an outstanding third baseman. I'll tell you this is, he is something, and Frank White deadened that ball perfectly. Gets him by a full stride. Now it is George Brett. I'll tell you, the play that Schmidt knocked the ball down on Willie Wilson, that might have been a second and third situation, because Wilson UL can run. He makes an outstanding play right here. But Brett, who was singled to right in the first, stole a base, and grounded out on a good sinker from Bystrom in the third. Schmidt and... Boone going to have a meeting. You have first base open, but the situation and the bunt is the big play right here so far because Brett, first base is open, but you got your cleanup man coming up. It's two to nothing. I think one thing here is that you have to find out exactly what you're going to do. I'm surprised that Herms Tourette or Dallas Green has not come out of the Philly dugout. So, so Bystrom knows exactly what he wants to do. You're either going to pitch to Brett or you're going to walk him. You're not going to pitch around him. He's too good a hitter to pitch around. You either go after him or you walk him and load the bases and go for a double play and get Aikens up there. That's Aikens on deck right now. I think one of the reasons neither came out from the dugout, they relayed some information through Boone and Schmidt, veterans who can handle the situation. They didn't want to waste the trip and then have to take him out the second. But now it's Brett with two men on. Phillies lead two to nothing at the bottom of the fifth. One strike, said Dutch Renner. George Brett. Outstanding with men on base. One ball, no strike to Brett. Out of play, one and one. One out. I think to put in focus when you're catching, the worst thing that you can have happen is to have a manager, and they say it in many different ways, but it always comes out the same. Don't walk him. Don't give him anything good to hit. Now, if he hits a bad ball, you don't even have a chance to say anything to the manager. You're a bunion head as soon as you step in the dugout. One ball, one strike, one out. Bills lead two to nothing. Runners on second and third for the Royals, and Brett the hitter. He'll score one. Trio over to Rose. UL Washington scores. It is two to one. Willie Wilson goes to third. And we'll keep Willie Wilson as UL Washington gets the congratulations. He started off the sitting with a single up the middle. And now Beister will have to make a decision. Pitch from the stretch. Will Wilson destroy his concentration to the most important man? Willie Mays Aikens at home plate. Will he take his wind up? RBI for Brett. First Royals run in game number five. Wilson decoying off third base. Bystrom will pitch from a wind up. Aikens with two out. Slider, too high, one ball. I think one of the factors on uh, the lead by Wilson will be how deep Mike Schmidt and how far off he has to play. The farther off and the farther back, the bigger lead that Wilson can get. Uh, Schmidt at third is way off. Two and all. Oh. You know, Tony, the point here with Wilson coming off third base, trying to, trying to distract Marty Bystrom. Pete Rose is going to go up and have a talk with Bystrom now. Many hitters don't like to see that runner jockeying up and down the line. Not only does it disrupt the pitcher, it disrupts the hitter's concentration at home plate. Especially a left-handed hitter because he is looking out of the corner of his eye. The shot that you see right here at Wilson. Watch Wilson jockeying with Schmidt way off. 
Rose came in to say, hey, the man you look for is the hitter. Forget that, Liz. Good breaking ball. He's behind 2-0. Oh. Now it's 2-1. and one. Big pitch by Maestro. But 2-0, oh, Akins has got to be sitting on a fastball. That shows what this kid can do. At 21 years of age, throw a breaking ball when he's behind. McCray, the on-deck hitter. That is Wilson, lower left. Maestrom has gone to the stretch. Three balls, one strike, two outs. Phillies two, Royals one. In the bottom of the fifth. He walks him with a three and one pitch. And now the Royals have runners on first and third of McCray. This is a good piece of pitching, I think, Tony. A three and one count. You don't give in to the hitter. You come in hard, way inside, and you throw that breaking ball again. The hottest hitter in the Royal lineup is that man, Willie Aikens. So we'll put him on first. Okay, you're putting the, the go-ahead run on first, but still you've got a right-hander and a right-hander now with two outs. Now it's McCray who lined off Feistrom's glove or uh, leg, was thrown out, and then flied out to center field. Wilson at third, Aikens at first, two outs. Fly ball, right field corner, Bateman McBride going to the foul pole. It is going to go. He got that ball. He made a great catch between the foul line and the stands and crashed into the wall to help Feistrom out and strand two runners. Here's a look at it. He's looking for the wall. He gets right next to it and really makes a great catch. It seems that to be ball a hit the wall. That ball hit the wall. It looked like it scooted off the side of the uh, wall. I don't think so. Not the way I saw it. All right. We'll get a chance to see it again. I don't know when, but we will. But that looked like it skidded along the side of the wall. Let's watch it and see it from this angle. The right field foul line umpire is Don Dinkinger. No, not for me. All right, gotcha, gotcha. There's a good look. Wait. Harry Coyle leaves ah. nothing unanswered. Wait a second. No, We're no. going to slow that down again because we have a difference of opinion up here between Joe and me. Watch her again. It is a tough play. No, sir. All right. <laughs> no, sir. Not well, for me. Well, we cannot tell by the replay because I still differ with you, Joe. I think it may have caught the wall, and I'm saying may have now. I'm listening. I'm watching that play right there, and for me, it didn't hit the wall. Hit in his glove, and he closed All it. All right. Regardless, McCray is retired. They strand two. Runners on first and third. Team has won two ball games. The Phillies won the first two in Veteran Stadium. The Royals won the first two here. Right now, the Phillies have a two-to-one lead over the Royals as we go to the top of the sixth. A Mike Schmidt two-run home run in the fourth. You saw the run a moment ago. Washington single to lead it off. Wilson single off Schmidt's glove. White sacrifice. Brett a ground out drove home the run, but then a fine catch by McBride in the right field corner may have saved some more runs. One strike to Boone. He had to do a double play in the third. Breaking ball hit hard to right center field. Hurdle cuts it off, so Boone is held to a single. Now it'll be Pete Rose who has grounded out twice. The first base was Pete Rose. Well, that discussion we had. Yes. About whether or not that ball caromed off the wall or not proves the point we've said often and umpires have too that replays can fool you. I don't think they lie too much. They tell the truth most of the times, but some of the times they fool you. No, people fool lie. Me. Machines don't fool lie. <laughs> Rhodes. Boone at first. Squares away, one strike. You know, I think it's interesting. I've talked to our director Harry Carl about it on that play where you saw that little trailer on the ball because some of the lens uh, speeds are not fast enough to show the little white trailer on that thing and it was deceiving one strike to Rose we're in the top of the sixth Boone's at first Gurr the pitcher off the glove and beat two Rose hit the guard right into the glove of Gurr an excellent fielder he has shown that three times today Larry Gurr says yeah I got it but I'm not so sure how so they double off Boone two outs He's an excellent fielding pitcher. Here again, P. Rose, just like last time, hits the ball very hard up the middle and an easy double play for him. Watch Aikens tag the bag and what he does. Right in the middle, it looks right at the umpire. 
Are you looking, Mr. Umpire? <laughs> Beautiful. There's another shot of a dead duck, Bob Boone. Look at him. Boom. There's just like Larry Boa earlier in the game, no chance to get back to first base. Uh, what Joe was talking about earlier, back in the fourth inning before Schmidt's home run, a bunt that Gura fielded through to Aikens, and he missed the bag. That set up Schmidt's two-run home run. One strike on Bank McBride. There are two outs. I tell you, for We're young the sixth. Tony, for young pitchers, Larry Gura's follow through in the way he plants his feet in perfect balance is a great lesson for the youngsters. Breaking ball. He pulled the string. Goes one and one. Larry Gura. He is a super athlete. Was a good swimmer. High school and college. Arizona State. Slider popped up. Left side. Brett will be waved away. Look out! Willie Wilson came from left center field and almost ran UL Washington over. He really let out of speed that time. UL makes a nice play. They've got tremendous speed on this ball club, and you only refer to it as base runners, but on defense, look at this. UL makes the play right there as Willie Wilson could have made the play in the same way on a deep fly ball to left center field. Oh. Royal Stadium in the heartland of America. Kansas City. This World Series tied at two games apiece. Amos Otis, Flynn Hurdle, Daryl Porter, bottom of the sixth. All the fans here, we hope you at home are enjoying this World Series. Two to one, Phillies over the Royals. Man you mentioned a while ago, Bobby Richards. Richardson in the ballpark, my farmer roommate. Otis has 10 hits. It is three short of Richardson's record of 13 in the seven game series. Renner, one strike. Billy Martin in the six game series for the 53 Yankees had 12 base hits. Otis has had an excellent World Series thus far. Otis struck out, single left in the fourth, and a high breaking pitch. Otis takes a lot of time to get in the box, Tony. Gets out, fiddles with his feet, fiddles his gloves, makes sure his pine tar is right. He's no hurry to get in there and hit. One strike, Marty Bystro. Breaking ball hit deep to left field. He hung a curveball. Lazinski is tied at two. earlier the last time up he got a high breaking ball and hit it for a base hit the first mistake he got and here's another high breaking ball another mistake and this time a home run the mark of the good hitter is when he does not miss a mistake that the pitcher throws up there Tom the first part of the season coming off that finger injury that Otis had there's the score two apiece in the bottom of the sixth he was missing those pitches he couldn't hold on to the bat but he finished off fairly strongly he has three home runs in this World Series. There have been 11 hit. The Royals have hit eight. Trill on the right center field past Trio. So Hurdle is on. Mr. and Mrs. Ewing Kaufman, Muriel. When this franchise started, Mr. Kaufman said, I will supply the money. There is Dallas Green, Bobby Wine to the left, and Herm Sturette. Kaufman supplied the money. He got a bunch of business people here, a unique organization. The Royal Lancer said, if you will go out and sell season tickets, I'll put up the dough. You can see how many people come to this ballpark. Nobody out. Two to two ball game. Hurdle at first, quarter the hitter. One ball in the barrel.
balance in home runs, Tommy. And uh, Philadelphia is, has some power hitters. But it is surprising to most. Snap throw that I think the Royals should be out homering the Phillies at this point. But they haven't been a home run team all year long, the Royals. They've been an extra base team. They hit these alleys in this big park. Ground ball could be thrown. Is going to try for third, but Fried's throw overthrows Boa. He is safe. Runners at first and third, but nobody out. The Philadelphia bullpen's been busy. The base hit to right field, and Hurdle sees it and judges Blake McBride as far as coming to the ball and makes up his own mind to go to third. It's closer than it really looks. Good decoy by Mike Schmidt. A good example of just following yesterday, Hal McRae who was very aggressive on the bases, and Clint Hurdle takes it up right here, stretches all the way around the third base on the single of a, for right field by Porter. Very good decoy by Schmidt at third base. He's very good at that. He'll wait till the last second to go get the ball. A lot of times base runners will look at that infielder's eyes to see which way that ball is coming and then slide towards his eyes in, in that direction. Bystrom is going to have to leave the game. Dallas Green is making a pitching change. Wow, well, we're in the bottom of the sixth. We've got a two-to-two -two ball game. And Hurdle sprints for third. We're going to leave you for a moment with a score here in Royal Stadium. All tied up in two. Here as they were in Philadelphia. And we'll be coming back for game number six after an off day tomorrow. Philadelphia. New pitcher is Ron Reed. He appeared in game number two for the Phillies. The ninth hitting and struck out two. Hurdle is at third. Porter is at first base. UL Washington, the hitter. Porter's hit the ball hard three times. Two singles to right and a line out to Rose. Washington, two for two with one run scored. Fly ball, left field. Hurdle will tag up. Lusinski will have to go to second base as Porter was tagging up. Here comes Hurdle. Wilds lead three to two. Clint Hurdle isn't charged up playing his first World Series as most of these players are. Only five on both teams have World Series experience. Willie Wilson fakes a bunt. Snap throw, but not in time. Porter, the base runner at first base. It's a three to two ball game in the bottom of the sixth. Royals lead. That's an ad lib play by Booney. Once he gets the ball, he saw the base runner Porter just take a couple steps. Willie Wilson is the most exciting player. One strike pitch. Deep to right field. McBride may not get it. It's over his head. He drilled it. Porter's going to try and score. Trios relay throw. The whole plate is in time. McBride off the fence. A beautiful throw with that strong arm by Trio. They get Porter. Thought they had no chance whatsoever, Joe. What a great throw. I was watching Porter coming around third, and but he lost the gas cap when he came around third. And Trio's strong arm, you just knew that he was going to get him. But Gordy McKenzie had him coming all the way. The relay is just a perfect play. Now watch him give it to Trio, who's really, I think, the best relay man I've ever seen. A strong throw. It's not even close. He could have done the same thing he did come in nice and polite, but he came in a little bit harder. It's an easy out for Booney. Here he comes around third. Right here is about when the gas tank flew kind of empty. I'll tell you, he had Booney set up because Booney was going to block the plate. He had to go down for that short hop. Now it's White with two outs. Wilson will be stranded a second as he pops it foul to Schmidt. So, Reed pitches out of it. Could have been trouble except for a great relay throw by Trio. 
Here he comes around third quarter. You remember in Philadelphia when he got in about the same situation, he kind of stopped and criticized for it, and rightly so. This time he went in as hard as he could, but same result. Out. A couple of very exciting innings, but after six here in Royal Stadium, Kansas City, the Royals lead three to two. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Philly runs. That came in the fourth inning. Amos Otis, a big home run to tie it, and the Royals have taken the lead, and it's ball one to Schmidt. Schmidt flied to left his first time up, and the two-run homer his second time up. High, 2-0. Oh. Sun shadow problem appears to be over with. Straight back. The balls in one strike. Tonight on NBC now, Chips and then Clint Eastwood, the outlaw Josie Wales, right after the ball game, except on the West Coast. Chips. One of my favorites. Two and one to count. Larry Gura. Nobody out. Straight back. Two balls and two strikes. Talking about what's on tonight, on Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time, we'll be in Philadelphia. And it'll be Rich Gale against Carlton. What a matchup. And those Philly fans, you know they're going to be ready to welcome their ball club back. They left 2, two to nothing as far as the series. And are at least tied, waiting the outcome of this one. And the Kansas City bullpen gets busy. High, 3-2. and two. Schmidt. She saw her husband, Mike, give the Phillies a lead with a two-to-nothing home run or two-run home run back in the fourth inning. We're shaking off a couple pitches and it broke Mike Schmidt's rhythm. Interesting situation here. One run ahead, the three-two count. What's Gura going to throw? Is he going to go hard stuff or off speed? Looked like it was hard. Might have turned it over a little bit. Daryl Porter behind the plate with two base hits, and the lady who brought back his favorite bat, I'll tell you, she knew what she was talking about. 3-2, Royals lead, seventh inning. Gura has been stingy, just three base hits. The Phillies have not left a runner on yet. On the other hand, the Royals have left on about nine unofficially. Popped up. Screwball took something off. Hurdle. Easy play. One up. There you see Donna Schmidt once again. Disappointed that her husband couldn't get the base hit. So is he. Girl, like he did the last time we saw him, getting a lot of fly balls. He's got eight or nine in this ball game. Just upsetting the rhythm of the hitters slightly. Except the timing. Here is Greg Luzinski. He's 0 for 2. One ball, one strike. There are so many things they say in baseball that make absolutely no sense, and then there are some that make so much sense. Don't be in a hurry to lose. Be in a hurry to win, which simply means set your own pace. And that's what Gura is doing. One and one to count on Luzinski. Tom, are there certain hitters that you pitch to that you know do not like to wait, and so uh, you might change your pattern to them? Do you go into that deeply? You know, one of the great hitters that was like that was Henry Aaron. He hated it when a pitcher fiddled around on the mound. Hated that. I wanted you, wanted you to get up there just the way Steve Carlton pitches. Get up and pitch, and that's the way Aaron liked to hit. Just like a hitter will try to upset a pitcher, the pitcher can upset a hitter by ruining his timing as well. 2-1 pitch. 3-1. and one. I tell you, about 700 plus times that you guys really got him, man. <laughs> I got him mad a few times, yeah. I think he, I think I got him mad about seven times in my career, Joe. <laughs> Three balls and one strike. He touched a lot of people for home runs, hammer and hang. Here's Luzinski. That 
That's out of play, and it goes to a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Good crowd on hand here. They have 42,369. They have 42,363 yesterday, 42,380. And this park is listed is only holding 40,628. walk team tying run is on and it brings up Moreland the on deck batter would be Maddox now that's the first walk given up by Gura Joey's got 74 pitches so far this game last last time he pitched in Philadelphia we're gonna have a pinch run for Greg Luzinski Lonnie Smith is gonna go in and run for him at first base Last time Gura pitched in Philadelphia, he got to 84 pitches and came out of the game after six innings and told Billy Connors, the pitching coach, and Jim Fry, the manager, that he was exhausted, tired. Certainly some of that must have been from the emotion of pitching in the World Series, but here, his first walk, three balls on Mike Schmidt, three balls on Greg Luzinski, and Larry Gura is a control pitcher. He's been getting the ball up a little bit the last two hitters. Her ball is low, ball one. Luzinski draws the base on balls, leaves the game for the pinch runner. He is the tying run, Lonnie Smith. One man out, 3 2, Royals lead. We're in the seventh. UL Washington goes to second, not in time. Safe, base hit for Moreland in the hole. You, you talk about some strategy working right there by inserting Lonnie Smith. They took what would have been an outstanding play right away from the Royals and UL Washington because Lazinski isn't going to beat that play. What's this? Outstanding. Good jump to his right. He goes into short left field. The old Popeye pass, and if not for Dallas Green's strategy, inserting the pinch runner Smith, it's a force out. Look at that play. Almost. Look at his stretch. He beat it standing up. That's how fast he is. He didn't even have to slide. The only danger there was overrunning it because he was standing up as we look at Dallas Green. But Jim Fry is going to make a pitching change. He's had a Quisenberry warming up in the bullpen. It's a 3-2 to two ball game. We're in the seventh inning with one out. Two base runners on. There you see the big cue. Larry Guerra leaves the, the uh, pitching mound. Gets a nice hand. So we've got a break in the action here. Tie and run is on. Tiebreaker is on. We'll be right back. A three to two ball game. Royals lead. Phillies is threatening. We'll be back. I know you will. Moreland is at first. Maddox is the batter. He is 0 for 2. Quisenberry, the sinker baller, submariner. The on-deck batter is Manny Trio. One out. Could be a double play. They're going to have to hurry. There's one. Throw is not in time. Pull him off the back. They had a chance, but the speed of Maddox made the play. So it's first and third with two outs and Trio the batter. Keith Moreland helped out coming off first base because watch how hard he goes into Frank White. By taking that ball with one hand, UL Washington may have wasted a split second, but look at Moreland forcing Frank White to throw off uh, balance. Akins leaves the bag. That's more important to keep your foot on. You've got to get the ball and leave the bag. That was a good shot because it showed Moreland forced UL Washington, the shortstop, towards third base. He had to throw across, and Akins made a good play by coming off the bag and making the catch. So there are two outs. Smith is now at third. Maddox, another good base runner, is at first, and Trio's a batter with two outs. So fake the third and maybe get the guy at first, but nothing happened. Sinker. Lonnie Smith at third. Maddox is at first. Two outs. Seventh inning. Kansas City leading three to two. This is game five. We're tied at two apiece. 
Wisenberry has been in every game in this World Series. Frank White, what a play! UL Washington to tag once again. Frank White at second base. Oh, Tony, you gotta love that play. I'm not the only one. Listen to the fans, they'll tell you how much they loved it. It's first and third. Quisenberry gets the ground ball. He got two, they missed one double play. Frank White, who said the best play he ever made he made change was the one he made in the championship series when he went in front of UL Washington to throw for uh, throw a runner out at first base. Oh, he is something. Defense and Frank White made it. So, bottom of the seventh, Royals three, Phillies two. Pitcher is Tug McGraw. Don't forget Tuesday night we'll be back in Philadelphia. Carlton for the Phillies, Gale for Kansas City, eight o'clock Eastern Time. It's going to be some ball game Tuesday night, and it's going to be some finish here. George Brett. These two clubs, they're playing now that brand of baseball that got him here in the first place. It's fouled out of play, strike one. The Phillies have been coming from behind, it seems like, all year long. Tug McGraw has been a busy man this month. Brett, we told you earlier against right-handed pitching during the year was 437, left-handed pitcher 318, and that's his lifetime batting average, 318 over a seven-year major league career. Aikens, the on-deck batter. One ball, two strikes. The Phillies had only six come from behind wins in the whole month of September. They've come from behind to win all five of the seven postseason games. There's the bench. One ball, two strikes. George Brett, Kansas City three, Philadelphia two in the bottom of the seventh. out on strike so McGraw gets his first strikeout that's one out in the seventh inning brings up Willie Akins that's not easy he struck out just 22 times during the regular season so he is not easy to strike out Tom Tom McGraw has such a variety of pitches though Tony inside outside slider curveball screwball and Tugger in his 15th year in the big leagues and still pop the ball pretty good at times threw the ball right by Brett and got it on the outside corner Willie Aiken struck out in the first and he singled his center field in the fourth and he walked in the fifth. On his toe with that front foot. Low ball one. Started getting on that toe on his front foot. Aikens did about six weeks ago. I was told yesterday behind the batting cage during batting practice and has been on a tear since. There you can see Dutch Renner. Establishing the back of the batting box, the rear of the batting box again. He's got no problem. He just goes to Bill Kunkel and says, let me have the tape measure there, Willie. There's that toe. What a stance. Curveball is inside, Renard says. When they get on the, front, uh, the toe of the front foot, usually the expression used is, keep your weight back. And that the misnomer in baseball, a lot of guys hit off their front foot. Great hitters. Didn't get it. Two balls in one strike. Whitfield really gets on his toe from the Giants. The other night, Tug McGraw got behind Willie Aikens. Threw him a fastball, and Aikens hit it for a game-winning hit up the left center field alley here, 2-0. and And he gets a curveball. Tug didn't give in to him. Strike two. Aikens against left-handers, a 199 average. 
six home runs and 24 runs better than against right handers 323. I would guess you're going to get a couple of breaking balls in this situation even if Tug misses with a 2 2 pitch. Screwball. He's strike called by the third base umpire. Now Aikens wants to talk to him. And Bill Cockle says go back. Oh, this is Jim Fry. Aikens had words on the pitch before with Renner. I've never seen a hitter go down that far and challenge a third base umpire on an appeal call. Ronnie, we'll let you take over on this. What's going on? I'll tell you, Willie's just he I don't know if he went too far. We can see on a replay. Oh yeah, he went out way out in front. Bill Kunkel had it right. Willie's just so high strung. Kunkel, it's a close call, and what are you gonna do? You gotta make it one way or the other. And Billy said one way. I thought it was a great of Billy not to come down and, and argue with him. Because Billy Kunkel could have come halfway down the uh, line and we would have really had a one on one. I never thought I'd hear an umpire ask for a replay on television. <laughs> That's a World Series first. Let me see the replay, the big umpire says. One ball and one strike. But that was a good call, Ron. You made a good point, too. There's Aikens. He is still upset. McRae, nobody will get this one. It'll be extra bases. Down into the corner. Lonnie Smith up with it. McRae stops it. Second, he has himself another double. You remember yesterday, McRae had two doubles. He's got another one today. And his bat's starting to go a little bit. It's very important when they go back to Philadelphia as we look at the screwball he hits in the corner. Not hit well, but they were playing him off the line. Lonnie Smith was. It's important because we're going to face a left-handed pitcher. His bat becomes very important against left-handed pitchers, especially a great pitcher like Carlton. You hear the crowd for Amos Otis. We talked about the most valuable player, the race being between Aikens and uh, Brett. You better put this fella in there, too. He has had some series. He has 11 hits, two short of Bobby Richardson's record of 13. They're going to put him on. Hal McRae was on at second base with the double, had 30 or more doubles for the seventh consecutive season with Kansas City, and a career high of 54 and 77. Back to 1980, he was fourth in the American League with 39 doubles. Yount led with 49. And there's Clint Hurdle. Otis with seven runs batted in now. He's second to Willie Akins as we look at the Phillies bench. I might add, with Hurdle coming up, watching McGraw throw that screwball to Akins in the 46 World Series. One of the real effective pitchers was Harry Burkeen. It was a series I was in with the Cardinals. And his effective pitch against the left-hand hitters and against Ted Williams was a screwball, which is a bit unusual, left-hander against left-hander. We're going to have a pinch hitter, though. Cardinal is coming out. Jose Cardinal. We have two men out, base runners at first and second. Royals are leading. Three to two, we're in the seventh inning. Cardinal. Has only been to bat four times. He's 0 for 4. Both managers are playing percentage baseball here, of course. To walk Amos Otis is to get the left hander against the left handed hitter. And now the. Tom, you uh, you pitched against Cardinal. What do you think? Cardinal is a, at times a dead guess hitter. Will sit on a on a certain pitch, sit on the fastball, sit on the breaking ball, but he's as good at going to right field as maybe any hitter I've ever seen. If he wants to go to right field, he can go that way. He doesn't have a real quick bat anymore, and he'll try to hit the ball to right field. Merle Harmon has a very anxious fan with him. Let's go to Merle Harmon. All right, Joe Phyllis McGraw. Right now, a tough situation for one guy on the mound. What, what do you think? I think he can handle it. <laughs> okay. He's got a count of no balls, no strikes, two down, runner at second, runner at first. Do you really follow his pitches? Sure I do. I wouldn't do that. Okay, Phyllis. Okay. 
Hits the first pitch, center field. Maddox is there, makes the catch. And that ends the inning. And let's find out what Phyllis McGraw thinks now from Merrill Harmon. Well, Phyllis, <laughs> here she is. I think you're a little more relaxed now, and you were correct in your prediction. You said he could get him out, and he did. Yeah, I, I believe in him. <laughs> <laughs> what about the kids at home? They watching? Sure. Uh, I think, yeah, this time of night, sure. <laughs> They're watching. What about the rest of the series? Oh, uh, predictions? I don't like to predict. I like to take it one game at a time, like the guy's been saying. I sure hope we win this one today. It'll really help a lot. Okay, fellas, thanks very much. Now let's go back to Joe. Okay, Merle, Phyllis McGraw, we complete seven innings of play here. The score, Kansas City three, Philadelphia two. Hurdle and fly to center field and the seventh. So it'll be Boa, Boone, and Rose. And now they switch towards the left field line for Boa against Quisenberry. It's outside. Ball one. At first and third, they're in tight. Outfield very shallow. Wilson is really shallow. In fact, it was where he was playing allowed him to make that great play on Boa yesterday when he held him to a single late in the ball game. Two balls and no strikes. Joe, as he did yesterday, Quisenberry coming in. Nobody on base, yet he's still pitching from the stretch. So obviously, through Billy Connors or Jimmy Fry, he feels more comfortable pitching for, from the stretch, and that's his, that's his option to pitch that way. Three balls and no strikes. And there's a fan who is really wrapped up in this thing. So excited. <laughs> oh, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I love it. So wrapped up, couldn't stay away. There's the strike. And the on-deck batter, Bob Boone. Phillies with only four base hits. Royals with 12. Royals three runs though. Phillies only trailing by a run. It's strike two. Ball taken all the way. Looked like a breaking ball. Three balls, two strikes, no outs, nobody on. Hitter goes up to the plate as we look at Fry against the Quisenberry and says, make him get the ball up, make him get the ball up. Boa did initially, forcing Quisenberry to get the ball up in the strike zone a little bit, which could pay dividends later. infielders who go well one way or the other. They have a strong side and weak side. Not that man. You've seen him go to his right. Tommy, you were amazed by the double play he made in the 10th inning of Schmidt going to his right, unassisted. Now he goes to his left. You know, we talked about possible MVPs and Willie Aikens or George Brett or Amos Otis or whatever. That man right there, Frank White, has got to be in contention just simply because of his defensive play. Here's the first pitch to Boone, it's ball one. Tony, on that particular play, he went four to his left, and he went behind him. He bobbled He's the ball. Amazing. His composure was just great. There's White of the Royals Baseball Academy, the first graduate, not the only one. You know, there was a guy, his name is Dick Green with the Oakland A's. They won a World Series one year. He was a second baseman. Never got one hit in that World Series. And yet, against the Dodgers, he was almost voted the MVP. Just beaten out. 1-1 one, one pitch, two balls and one strike. Unfortunately, it's the wood that gets the publicity. The leather just stays there, but Frank White just may change it. That's because the writers, there's Pete Rose on deck. That's because the writers vote for the men who go in the Hall of Fame and not ball players. The preceding was a political announcement by Tony Kubek. Foul ball. Two balls and two strikes. How do you really feel, Tony? It was more of an announcement. It was more of a zinger. <laughs> Wouldn't you call it more of a zinger nah. as opposed to an announcement? No. Three to two. The Royals leading the Phillies here. Bob Boone. Two balls and two strikes. One out. Quisenberry. Hot smash. Brett. Good play. Long throw. Aikens can't come up with it. Boone is heading for second. White is there. The throw is not in time. Can't handle it. They had two shots at him and missed him both times. The ball hits the dirt. Maybe the seam to Brett. It was hit like a shot off the bat of Booney. Was not an easy catch. And then once that 
Red Hat, and here's where he made a lot of errors over the past few years. He may have nonchalant his throw because he had a lot of time. He's shown a good arm his whole career. It should have been made easily by Aikens, I think, because he did get a big, long hop. But Aikens didn't make the play, and White almost made another outstanding play, Tom. We have a show. We have, we have seen the good, strong arm of George Brett through the series. Really, the first bad play that he's made, and the point you made, Tony, the amazing thing is that Frank White, backing up the play, almost made another great play. Pete Rose takes it outside, ball one. That's about the third or fourth time that Willie Aikens has let a ball get by him over there at first base as well. Well, I don't think it's any secret. He could leave his glove back at the hotel and he'd still play because he can hit. Fouled out of play. It's an error on the third baseman, Brett, and the tying run is at second base. Rose the batter. There you see Brett. McBride on deck. out twice line hard to Gura in the sixth robbed of a base hit bouncing ball Frank White at second has it to Aikens out taking third is Boone there are two outs it brings up McBride right fielder coming up on NBC News Monday night John Chancellor talks to Ronald Reagan and President Carter about U.S. military readiness. And then next Friday, NBC Magazine with David Brinkley gets an exclusive interview with James Cagney. While you're reading that, Joe, Frank White went all the way over to first baseman. There's Boone on third. First baseman Aikens to say, look it, be aware of a bunt. He also yelled in to Quisenberry, you get over if he bunts to try and score that runner. The runner is Boone at third. Strike one. McBride hit on a play earlier. There it is with runners on first and third for the Royals off the bat of Hal McRae. Did it or did it not hit the wall? I still think it might have grazed it. I say in his glove. What do you say at home? Tap the ball. Two strikes. Well, I'll tell you something. We've been listening to Dutch Rennert, but if he gets a strike, Dutch Rennert will be drowned out by this crowd. They're on every pitch, much like the Philly fans were in Philadelphia and will be Tuesday night when we're there. Gale against Carlton, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Get ready. Make your plans. It's going to be a good shootout. There he is on deck, Mike Schmidt. but he'll get him with that arm. One out. And the Kansas City bullpen is busy. The shortstop, UL Washington. Tonight, we got a special family episode of Chips, and then big stars. We look at Rennie Martin loosening up. Clint Eastwood, and if you're a Clint, Clint Eastwood fan, and who isn't, it's the outlaw, Josie Wales, right after the ball game, except on the West Coast. And of course, when I say that, it'll be seen at its regular time on the West Coast. I should know that. It's the same thing in Arizona. I hear that. I know exactly what they mean. UL doesn't get it, and it's a screwball and a strike one. He has great motion on that screwball, Tom. Sometimes, I, I, I guess he uses that as changeup. He throws two different kinds of screwball. One that goes down that we've seen in this series, and that one that he really pulls the string. Strike two. One of the great things about watching McGraw pitch, 
Tony is that he has the same release point for all his pitches. He gets his hand up there above his head, and it's not to the last minute until he turns it, his wrist in, inboard or outboard for a curveball, slider, or fastball, and outboard for the screwball. It's amazing to see a pitcher with so many pitches, let's say the changeup, fastball, slider, curveball, screwball, and they all come out of the same spot when he's throwing. Three to two. We're in the bottom of the eighth, looking ahead to the ninth for the Phillies. Schmidt, Smith, and Moreland. Three, four, and five hitters. Royals leading by a run. One man out. UL Washington with a count of two strikes. What an unpredictable series. That first game, Bob Walk pitched. They said, well, they're buying time. He ends up winning it. Steve Carlton was supposed to blow him out. He hung on. They won it and moved to Kansas City. And there's the grip. Tuesday night, it'll be Philadelphia. Gale against Carlton. Eight o'clock Eastern time. We'll be there. He's out on strikes. McGraw gets his third strikeout. I don't have to tell you what happens if the Royals win. They're leading by one. Going back, the Phillies would have to win two done that before haven't they a lot of times <laughs> <laughs> and that's what the Royals kept saying but I kept saying yeah I know you lose the first two you say that's like whistling past the cemetery but here they've come back one two and leading here in this third one here at home Willie Wilson one bet against lefty in game six in any ballpark maybe as great a pitcher as there is in baseball today Wilson ball one play one ball one strike McGraw is a real stickler for mechanics works on his mechanics all the time getting down to bend his left leg and bend his front leg and get through to make sure that that arm comes through in the same spot real studier pitching they're going to have a tough play they get him what a play by McGraw look at him he is really a hyper young man look at him Talks to everybody. I got him. Now you guys go out and get him. Well, we're at the end of eight. And the score here. Here's the play again first. Watch the play he makes. Well, Mike Schmidt was not going to make it. And Tug McGraw makes one outstanding play, Tommy. He had to get a lot of the ball, and he just gets it by a half a stride or less. Not only an outstanding pitcher, but an outstanding athlete, all-around athlete. He's a great gymnast in the sense, great body coordination and body balance, and if you can make a play like that and throw out Willie Wilson, you have to be a fine athlete. So we complete eight innings. The score, Kansas City three, Phillies two, and two up. It'll be Mike Schmidt, Lonnie Smith, and Keith Moreland. <coughs> the complex here in Kansas City. Sun starting to set. Schmidt takes a low ball one. Schmidt with a home run earlier in the fourth inning for the two Philly runs. Phillies have only made four hits. Hot smash. Brett knocks it down. It's a base hit for Mike Schmidt. Tying run is on. And the threat of Mike Schmidt bunting done it twice in the series kept George Brett in tight at third base even with a bag and it may still pay dividends had he been back look where Brett starts from he is very aware as you pointed out Schmidt has outstanding speed for a big man Tom and that allowed possibly the base sit right here if he's back farther that's a, that's a routine out for George Brett you can see that ball is not that far to his left if he's back another 10 or 12 feet where he normally would be Let's say against another power home run hitter. That's an easy play for George Brett. So the tying run is on. We have a pinch hitter now for Smith, who came on as a pinch runner for Luzinski after Luzinski walked in the seventh. Del Unser is a pinch hitter for the Phillies. Nobody out. We're in the top of the ninth. Royals lead three to two. 
Hunter in that second game had the big base hit against Quisenberry. Uh, Brett is moving in close to third base. Strike one. No sign of a bunt there. Al, an old baseball adage, axiom. Played a tied home and win on the road. And Dallas Green's going to want to win on the road. There's Marlon, the DH. Philly front office in the background there. You saw Paul Owens, Willie Carpenter, rooting him on. Tony, your point is well taken, too. But another point, bunting on AstroTurf is much more difficult than bunting on natural, gla natural grass. Much more difficult to make a better bun on AstroTurf. One strike pitch. Hot smash. Pass Aikens in the right field. Schmidt can run. He's running hard. He's running third. They're going to try to score him. Here comes the throw. They'll not get him. We're tied. Del Unser again comes through. A big base hit. This time between Aikens and the bag. He has been outstanding for how many years now, Tom? Coming into the clutch. Sitting on that bench call. Here's the other reason that we were... We should have mentioned. He's got to hold him on, Aikens, with Schmidt's speed, and they didn't bunt. They knew he had to hold him on. Unser can pull the ball as he just did. I'll say one thing. Schmidt showed his speed scoring on that because there was two pretty good relay throws. Cardinal to White to Porter. So we're all tied up. Tiebreakers at second base. Here's Keith Moreland. He's going to bunt. He does. Down to Aikens. He picks it up. He'll tag Moreland, and moving to third is Unser. One man out. Unser at third base. Crowd very quiet. Unser on that double got hung up at second base. Could not see the third base coach, Lee Ilya, and, sh and would have made third base very easily. But Ilya's concentration was on the runner coming home, Mike Schmidt, and Unser got hung up at second. Couldn't see the ball behind him. Didn't know if he could make it to third. Had he gone to third, he'd have made it very easily. And here comes Jim Fry out to visit for a visit with Quisenberry, his pitcher, Porter, and Brett at the mound. Ilya was way up the line, three quarters of the way, and he, he did not hesitate. He had him coming all the way. Tom, a base runner's got to do that himself, though. You look over your shoulder, and I think Unser's an excellent base runner, but with... The situation the way it was, no odds at the time, he was not going to take any additional chances. He still would get down on the sacrifice or any other way to third base where he can still score on the sacrifice fly with one down. That bullpen for the Royals is going. That's Marty Patton. Patton. Brett. Ken Brett, the left-hander. Patton, the right-hander. Jim Fry stays with Quisenberry. Maddox is the batter with one man out. The on-deck man is Trio. So you have right-handers against right-handers with one man out. Unser, the tie-breaking run, is on at third. Looking ahead to the Kansas City ninth, it's White, Brett, Aikens. Infield is in. Wisenberry's got to get the ground ball. Maddox, spread stance. High chopper, Brett. It is a fair ball. close. It was Rennert's call, both Rennert and the third base umpire, Kunkel looking straight down the line. Watch Rennert. He got in position. Here's Maddox. He is thrown out by Brett as Brett held the runner on, sir. And boy, Rennert and Kunkel got on that line and really looked down. Another good play by George Brett at third base. And from the angle up here in the booth, Tony, that looked like a foul ball. But Dutch Rennert was right down on one knee, looking straight down that third base line and made a Made the call immediately to a fair ball. It is the position of the ball, not where Brett was. Brett was in foul territory. He doesn't matter. It's where the ball is, and Renner was on. Trio, foul tip. Strike one, off his foot. Here's George again. Look where he's standing. Doesn't matter. The ball is right on the line. Dutch Renner, the whole plate up our call. It's the responsibility of the third base upper after it passes the bag. That's why the line is a misnomer it's not a foul line if it's on the line it's a fair ball so semantics would say it's a fair line but you kind of after double day to get all uptight if you call it that 
Trio, another foul tip. Two strikes, two outs. Base runner at third is Unser. That's he didn't, a pitch he didn't throw too much on the first time he saw them. You mentioned you and Paul Moscow have been charting. That was a little bit of a slider. He throws it to right-handers, Quisenberry. He's afraid to throw it to left-handers. It's flat. First time that Quisenberry came in, he threw everything fastballs except for one pitch. And I think he's learned that he has to throw at least something else to complement this sinker that he has, the underhand sinker. He's got to let the hitter see another pitch. Two-strike pitch. Fouled off. Trios remains alive. We're all tied, 3-3. Three, three. Schmidt, a single off the glove of Brett, a double by Unser driving in Schmidt, a sacrifice by Moreland put Unser at third. Maddox was out. Brett to Aikens, there you see Unser. Trio's a batter with a count of two strikes. to react. It's 4-3 Philadelphia. The shortstop, Larry Boa. The Phillies take the lead. 4-3. Here it is again. Quisenberry has a reputation to be the fine feeling pitcher. He's lucky to get a, just a glove on that ball and not get hurt. The ball bounds away, and Brett almost makes another fine play. To speed a trio, he beat it out. And the Phillies go ahead 4-3. to three. And it's one of those pitches, no balls, two strikes. Quisenberry got a little bit up in the strike zone. Give trio credit, because he did rifle it. One of those where you might say, hey, try and get him to swing at my best pitch. A sinker out of the strike zone down. Here is Boa. Draws a throw at first base, trio does. In the bottom of the ninth, it'll be Frank White, George Brett, and Willie Aikens for Kansas City. They now trail by a run. High hopper, UL Washington charges hard through. In time, they get in. Boa is out. But the Phillies take the lead. And there is Janie Quisenberry. You can see the disappointment and frustration as her husband and the Kansas City Royals go to the bottom of the ninth, trailing by a run. It's Philadelphia four, Kansas City three, and two up. Four trio rifle the ball off Christenberry, and here's Dale. You want to see a reaction? That took the lead. Boy, he has been a big man for this team. Pinch hitting especially. Tell you, he's gotten some big hits. He's been around a long time, and he said it all when he said, when the first base hit off Quisenberry, this scratch is a 30-year itch for me. And he scratched that itch again with that base hit. It was a big one. Here is Frank White. What a game he has played. Tremendous plays. He takes the first pitch low. It's ball one. White made a game-saving play in the seventh inning. Another great play in the eighth. City being hot in this ball game, or will be if they lose, the same as in game two. They stranded 11, and then Philadelphia came here and stranded 15 one game. They will be haunted by that game as the series goes along. And City stranded 11 this game. Two balls and one strike. George Brett, the on deck hitter, he'll be followed by Willie Akins. There is Brett. To 
Quote a famous television line. That picture needed no words. George Brett. Big hole between first and second. They have to hold White on. Strike one. Earlier this year, Earl Weaver, the Baltimore manager, walked Brett with a man on first base. He lost the ball game, but he said they did it to Williams, and the way Brett swings the bat, even though I lost, I'd do it again. Strike two. Nobody out. Bottom of the ninth. Philadelphia four. Kansas City three. White at first base. McGraw. Doug McGraw did not pitch very well to Frank White at all. It looked like he was darting the ball, Joe, but I've seen him do it so many times. He seems to create his own little moment of drama, and then he works his way, his way out of it. Out on strikes. Big strikeout. George Brett called out on strikes. Four strikeouts for Tug McGraw. He came on in the seventh inning. He has struck out four. He has walked two. Well, he, he, he just blew smoke by him, Tom. I think he had George looking for something else, or otherwise it's absolutely perfect pitch on the outside corner, and George certainly knew it. Walked right away from home plate. No argument with Dutch Renner. Here is Willie Aikens. Aikens out on strikes in the first, single in the fourth, walked in the fifth, out on strikes in the seventh. Philadelphia four, Kansas City three. Tying run at first, Frank White. Pitch out, nothing going on. Ball one. It was Aikens who got the big base hit off of McGraw. It's in the tenth inning to win it. Ball two. Dallas Green. Concepcion, the pinch runner at first. One out. 4-3. Phillies lead. Bottom of the ninth. One out. The second. Out. Can only get a force play. It was a broken bat. 
and Boa made a nice play. White's at third to tie and run. Amos Otis, the batter, he's been hot. Larry went a long way for that ball because he was playing McCray up the middle. McCray is not a pull hitter, even though he pulled the ball foul to left. McGraw makes a good pitch, got it on the handle, and Boa ran eight, ten steps to his right on a sharply hit ball, even though the bat broke down. You know, the words of Dallas Green, I was talking to him in the clubhouse after the game last night. He says, we haven't done anything easily all year long. There's no sense for us to start now. And Tug McGraw's got two outs, but he's got runners at the corners, and he's not getting out of this inning very easily. The Royals are making it as tough as they possibly can. Otis is two for three. He struck out in the second single in the fourth, hit a home run in the sixth. He has 11 base hits, two short of Richardson's record of 13. comes Herm Sturette right now. He started to go out. He was called back by Bobby Wine back to the dugout. Time is out. They gave him some more information. I think he's going to boom first. This is something he does. Could be too, Tony, that they're going to set. They will not take the bat out of Otis's hands, I'm sure, but you've got to think about all possibilities. you got base runners at the corner, and they're going to talk how to pitch to McRae and I mean to Otis and watch McRae and White on the bases. Jim Fry, Dallas Green, four to three. Phillies lead, bottom of the ninth. Tuesday night, Carlton against Gale. In Philadelphia. center field they're playing him in right center almost as if, as if to say throwing the screwball and playing that way see what happens basketball low ball wide Otis has hit the off speed pitching well run in the first ball game off speed hit the ball hard off two breaking balls today so maybe they're gonna power him make him hit the ball the opposite way fastball he can handle as you look at Frank White at third and McRae at first is a fastball up and out over the plate they want to keep the fastball down they want to keep the fastball hard inside if they are going to go with the part stuff he's gotten two mistakes on breaking balls today and hit it hard both times some kind of a record in there for when catchers do block a ball in a situation like this to save a run. Big play. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. White, the tying run is at third. McRae, the winning run is at first. We'll take a good look now at McKenzie and maybe get the green light. The on deck batter is big. Philly fan, as opposed to the Royals fan. We saw White's at third, McRae's at first. Two outs, three and oh, the count. Gotta believe he's gonna have the green light. Cardinal's the on deck hitter. It'll dictate that move whether he hits three and oh or not. You gotta believe he's gonna get a whack at it if he wants to. All four walked him. So they pitched around Otis and moved the winning run to second base. They didn't give him a chance. That's Ron Reed's wife right, wife right there. Donna Schmidt. Julie Reed. Donna Schmidt. Cardinal, he came on, pinch hitting for a hurdle in the seventh inning, and he flied to center field. Up there now with the bases loaded. Foul ball. 
Strike one. Jose has never been much of a base on ball center. He goes to swing when he leaves that on deck circle. Absolutely praying. count bases loaded two outs one ball two strikes and he goes with his money pitch the screwball you know it's the important thing here Joe you talked about before if he really did pitch around Amos Otis what is it was he looking at Jose Cardinal in that on deck circle all the time willing to put the winning run at second base and try to get his out man Jose Cardinal that's going to be an interesting question to ask Tug after the game I'm going to answer it in my mind if I were catching yes I would not let Amos Otis beat me well I've known Tug for 15 years and I, I think he's right I think he walked him on purpose I do too I you, think you'd have a lot of managers and a lot of pitchers coaches come out and shoot you when you're wrong but if he had in his mind he wanted to get that man in the on deck circle Cardinal to make him the last out it's a do or die you either hero or goat but you're going to go the way you think you can get out of the inning the best Phyllis McGraw I don't know how Cardinal even got a bat on that screwball that ball was about six inches off the ground and he literally threw his bat at the ball right at the last foot second and somehow fouled it one ball, two strikes, two outs, bases loaded, 4-3, bottom of the ninth, Phillies leading. Struck him out! Cardinal out on strikes, and the Philadelphia Phillies defeat the Kansas City Royals by the score of 4-3. And there is Phyllis McGraw, Ron Reed, and now the Phillies head back to Philadelphia, leading in this series three games to two. McGraw took a chance. He threw the ball by Cardinal with the bases loaded, three and two, up by one run, and Cardinal swung at ball four. Might have been a tie ball game. Here's Tug McGraw and his reaction as he blew a ball by. Excuse me, I said three and two, wasn't three and two, of course. Two and one. Look at the reaction. The reaction by Tug McGraw and Merle Harmon is down on the field. He's with him. Let's get a reaction while he's still so so up. Merle? All right, Tug McGraw and Bob Boone with us here on the third base side. Tug, when uh, Hal McRae hit that ball, I saw you do this. What were you thinking? Well, when he first hit it, uh, I couldn't pick up the spin, and, and it looked like it was going to go out of here. But then finally it started to curl like a five iron shot and went foul. But uh, Boy, I had my heart jumping there for a while. Bob, did you give him any encouragement when you saw the ball lead the bat? No, I, I, I saw it was going to hook foul. I just told him it was a nice, exciting game. Booty <laughs> <laughs> comes out to the mound and says, isn't this exciting? <laughs> That's an understatement. Were you overthrowing a little bit in the ninth inning? Yeah, I think I went out there and wanted it too bad. I had to. But then again, I was trying to be too careful, too. So um, combination of both. 
All right. Did you pitch? Did you pitch around uh, anybody? Yes. Yeah. yeah I, well, I was trying to be real careful with Amos, but uh, I wasn't intending to get anybody on base. It was just a real exciting inning. Right now, I'm too psyched up to actually go through everything as it happened. But uh, uh, I know I was trying to be real careful, and at times I was trying to throw the ball too hard to make a good pitch. And you know, a combination of a lot of things go on your mind out there. But fortunately, we got through it. Bob, what about the pitching as we go into the last two ball games now? Well, you know, like I've said all the way through this playoff, I think the two outstanding teams, the Royals, just been hitting the ball so well. I think, you know, we're looking for a big game from Carlton on Tuesday. Uh, uh, I'm not sure who they're going with yet, but I, but I think it's going to be a hard fought right to the end, and I don't think the home field advantage really has uh, has any it's, advantage to either, either club. It's going to be Rich Gale as Jose Cardinal as we watch him on that last pitch, the strikeout, and, of course, the ever-present uh, uh, Tug McGraw, who says you got to believe, and I know you did today. Yes, sir. And I believe my teammates today, too. They did a great job. All right, guys, congratulations.